Hey everyone, John Greenwald here with TheBlackVault.com. Thank you so much for tuning in and, well, as always, using this channel to get the latest and greatest news on all sorts of topics, but of course, UFOs and UAPs I know is very, very popular here, and I deal with the topic a lot, and that is what today's video is all about. Now, for those of you who are using social media, you'll notice that this morning I had retweeted something from Jeremy Corbell. Now, Jeremy Corbell is the investigative filmmaker who was part of publishing one of two stories, the other by investigative journalist George Knapp, wherein two leaked sets of information was put out. Unclassified information, but leaked uh, nonetheless. Sourced from anonymous sources, these uh, leaks that were published by uh, both gentlemen were immediately, I would say, attacked by skeptics and praised by believers. And so what I did was reached out to the Pentagon without trying to get involved in the debate and whether or not, you know, this was seagulls or a hat or whatever <laughs> explanation uh, that the UFOs could be and essentially tried to figure out, OK, here's this information. Is the Pentagon going to put a statement out? This is the story on how that all unfolded, because I had originally broken uh, the story within about f uh, 72 hours from the first story that 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 was published by George Knapp. Uh, and then two days thereafter, the one by Jeremy Corbell, uh, I originally published and broke that story that the Pentagon went on the record about them. So I wanted to make this video to coincide with an article I just published. And that's what you're going to see on screen to kind of go over that with you guys in a video form. That way, you can get a little bit better of an understanding on what truly went down and how it all went down. Now, I had published the statement that I did on April 9th, which I'll go over. But what I didn't publish was a back and forth clarification thread of emails where I went to the point of triple checking the information that I received. Now, why do I do that? Well, plain and simple, I want to ensure 100% accuracy. Now, I am a stickler for details. Sometimes you can see by the comments on these types of videos, maybe it's to a fault. But it's never steered me wrong when I have the intent of bringing you guys the most accurate information that I can. So I don't get a statement and then just, aha, that's it, and run with it. Because I can tell you there's been quite a few times that if I were to do that, I'd be issuing quite a few corrections and I would have to walk back some of my headlines and so on and so forth. I don't like doing that. I'm human. I make mistakes. I ask my wife. I make a lot of them. But what I try and do with stories like this is make sure that it's accurate. Hence why I go to triple checking things and really clarifying and ultimately playing semantics and nitpicking on words. But again, there's a reason why I do that. Well, all of that information that I didn't publish, you're about to see it all. Why? Because I knew deep down something was going to happen. I knew deep down that that confirmation that I got within days of asking was too easy. I knew deep down that part of this was going to become controversial to the point where I would reference back to this and show all of you guys what really happened. Why didn't I publish that to begin with? Well, I didn't want to put the theory out there and jinx the whole thing that something was going to be controversial in the future. I don't like to bank on that, but I knew deep down there would be. Now, here's the story. Let me pull up the article so you guys can see it. This obviously is uh, either the page that you're on right now or you're watching on YouTube. The link is in the description below. Now, as I go through this, you guys can do me a huge favor. I am fully supported by all of you. And the biggest form of support is not only a thumbs up on the video, but also subscribing to this channel and sharing it with those that you feel would benefit from the information. I do spend a lot of time and effort to, again, try and bring that accurate information to you. And this video is a product of that. So please, a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, make sure you turn the notifications on. That is a huge help to me. Now, 
Confusion surrounds leaked UFO images. Pentagon declines to comment. Well, you guys probably have heard the not only published by the Black Vault that the information was confirmed, but that obviously went viral for many reasons throughout the world that numerous outlets also confirmed with the Pentagon, some of which cited me as the original source for breaking that story. Others went to the Pentagon directly, got the same comments and published them as their own. Whichever way they did it, which is fine with me, uh, they were confirming that this material was true. What I quickly started to see within days was that there was a contradiction that was forming. And the reason why that there was a contradiction was that Fox News was the first that I saw that had this, I would say, um, to me, this was, I would say that the start of the confirmation of, of there was something wrong, at least to me anyway, where they went out of their way, Fox News went out of their way to specify that the briefing slides were not included in the statements. Now, as you'll see here, as I go over it, that is not necessarily true. And I went out of my way to confirm that the briefing slides were included in the statements. Now, in my article, you'll see where Jeremy Corbell had originally published the the video uh, and the what we'll call the briefing slides. And you'll also start to see the exchanges. Now, this here is the email between Susan Go and myself. And this is when I tried to clarify on whether or not uh, they were going to comment. This was my second attempt after Jeremy Corbell had dropped his story. Now, for the audio version of this, because I'm going to go ahead and, and extract it, I want to read to you guys the second attempt to verify information. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to read every single email. Just know at this point, this was the second. I had already reached out about George Knapp's photographs that he'd leaked. That would be the, the three um, photographs known as the acorn, the sphere, and the metallic blimp. I had already reached out to them about that, that one unanswered. This is the second attempt. Good morning to you both. I wanted to touch base as we close this week regarding even more leaked Navy material touted to be unclassified on the topic of UA UAPs. I understand I pursue a lot of questions with you both and the most that come uh, and, and most of the time they come up with the stance that the DOD and the Navy, et cetera, will not comment on potentially ongoing UAP issues. However, I am hoping you both will indulge me again. So I will ask if there's any comment to DOD slash Navy can give about the allegations that U.S. Navy photos, briefing slides and video that have been leaked and profiled below are genuine. And are they considered UAPs slash unidentified as an official designation? Now, I asked it that way because I had asked the Navy back in September of I think it was like 2018 when I got them on the record about the original UAP videos, the FLIR, the Gimbal and the GoFast. The Navy did go on the record. They did call them UAPs and unidentified. And that story went viral. Well, that's what I wanted to do again with this. Get that official designation. So that's why that that was termed that way. You'll also notice in the article here that I did link to Mystery Wires articles. Now, this was not against Jeremy. I just kept it consolidated to one site, and that was Mystery Wire, one of which was the original three photographs being published. The next one was 48 hours later when Jeremy Corbell published his blog. Uh, Mystery Wire also covered that and also published the video and those photographs slash briefing slides. You'll see right here, I linked to them both. That way, there was no confusion on what I was asking about. So again, this is the second email. I had linked specifically to the photos, the video, and the briefing slides and mentioned all of them. Let me read more of the uh, email that I sent. This is something that I would assume, since the sites are offshoots from a CBS affiliate site, that they will get additional attention and press elsewhere and likely fast. That obviously did happen. So I'd like to get out ahead of that with an official comment, since none of these write-ups make reference to any DOD stance or comment. 
In addition, I want to ask about these leaked leaks themselves. According to those who wrote the above, what they show is unclassified, yet some of it comes from a classified briefing. So I'd like to ask, what, if anything, is being done about a seemingly problematic scenario where numerous photographs, videos, and presentation slides from classified briefings are finding their way to the internet without proper review slash release of presumably for official use only information? I appreciate any helps slash quotes for the above. I was asking that latter half simply because, uh, well, I've seen enough in my day to know that when things come out into the open, they are looked into. That doesn't mean that anybody's going to be prosecuted or charged with anything, or if this was even a leak of, of classified information, but rather it seems like UAP related information is leaking like a sieve. So how is it possible that that's going on and the Pentagon just goes, meh, who really cares? We'll just let it go. It doesn't make sense to me. We know with documented evidence that the leak of the FLIR, the GoFast, and the Gimbal videos a few years back were investigated. We have the official report from AFOSI or the Air Force Office of Special Investigation, and we know for a fact they looked into it. We also know for a fact all that information was unclassified, just like this material. So there's a lot of parallels there that you can draw. Ergo, I believe that there should be an investigation and won't be surprised when we learn in the future if there is one. With that said, I still wanted to comment on it. That was the original uh, second attempt at a attempt by me to get a comment. I don't know any other way to put it, uh, but that is what I said. So now the exchange gets a little bit odd. When she, meaning Susan Goff, who is the Pentagon spokesperson, originally sent me her statement. This is what you read on April 9th. This is what I published on that Friday night. And it read the following. I can confirm that the referenced UFO, or excuse me, I can confirm that the referenced photos and videos were taken by Navy personnel. The UAP task force has included these incidents in their ongoing examinations. Again, that was Susan Goff by the DOD. I just read to you exactly the email that she was referring to. Now, note she ignored the part about uh, any investigation into classified material going out into the public realm or unclassified material leaking out into the public realm, because even unclassified information can be exempt from release. There are nine Freedom of Information Act categories, and even though information is unclassified, it can fit into those exemptions and it can be exempt from disclosure and denied to you, even though it's unclassified. That is why unclassified and for official use only information, which is technically, again, unclassified, requires a review. She ignored that. So I followed up. In the interest of 100% accuracy, I asked her immediately, can you confirm your statement is attributable, attributable to the leaked briefing slide photographs as well? Now, I had already bounced back and forth a follow-up with her asking for the designation, because again, you'll notice she ignored that part too. She, did not, she denied that. She said, I have nothing further for you beyond what I provided. So she immediately shot that down. So then I took it a step farther about the briefing slides in that interest of accuracy. To my surprise, she, she had responded with a little bit of confusion. She said, I'm not sure I understand your question, John. Well, she had responded to the article, so I assume she read them. So I clarified what the briefing slides were, and I embedded the, sleeping, uh, the, the, the briefing slides into the email that I sent her in response. I also said the below, the below were allegedly leaked slides from a classified briefing presentation. Can you confirm that they are? She responded, the only thing that my statement confirms is that the photos and videos in that Mystery Wire article are photos and videos taken by Navy personnel. I have nothing for you on anything else in the article. How I took that was those briefing slides were photographs. It's pretty easy to see that. They're 
uh, it's a photo array. What they are, however, are photographs of video stills or exports of video stills as displayed in this briefing slide. So let's play some semantics here a little bit. If they are considered photographs, her statement would apply. If it's considered a video, let me prove why it would still apply. This was the second time that the Pentagon and Susan Goff used the word videos, plural. I'll read it again. The only thing that my statement confirms is that the photos and videos in that Mystery Wire article are photos of videos taken by Navy personnel. Let me scroll back up to the original statement that was given. I can confirm that the referenced photos and videos were taken by Navy personnel. Now, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse or play a game of semantics, but now on numerous occasions, Susan Goff has used the plural version of videos. So however you view those briefing slides, whether they depict a video, which according to Corbell's reporting, they do. I triple checked actually with Jeremy Corbell just moments prior to recording this video. He does confirm to me, yes, they are taken from a video or if they are considered photographs, that's fine too, because they were all sent to her, meaning Susan Goff in an email, and those emails specifically referencing those, those briefing slides and specifically asking about them was responded to, and you can see what she wrote. All of that has numerous opportunities for her to say, look, John, just to avoid any confusion, I am referencing the acorn, the metallic blimp, and the sphere photos, but those other things I am not. Yet she didn't. She used plural versions of the word videos, and she referenced all photographs. Numerous opportunities to clarify she did not. So I did not get that original statement and run with it. She had ample opportunity, and yet she didn't take it. Well, when I started seeing the contradicting reporting, uh, again, first by Fox News, at least that I saw. I don't know who was first. When I saw the Fox News report, then later on Twitter, I saw that uh, researcher and, and writer Roger Glassel from uh, Sweden, who also got these contradicting statements from the Pentagon. He posted it on Twitter. I thought, you know what? The, the time there's time. The time is now to follow up and say, okay, here was ample opportunity for you to specify those briefing slides were not included in your blanket statement. Yet now I'm seeing contradictions to that. So let me read to you what I wrote early, early this morning. My day starts early every day. Uh, I run a business outside of the Black Vault. My alarm goes off at 4 a.m. I'm in my office by 4.05. I do various things all morning. That is why the timestamp is so darn early. But I, but I start that early just to kind of get a head start in the day because there's never, any, uh, there's never enough hours. Here's what I wrote. I wanted to follow up as I saw a statement of clarification you sent to Roger Glassell, wherein you apparently were not referencing the briefing slides I had asked you about when your original statements went out. Can you clarify that the images I sent you in which I referred to the briefing slides were not confirmed when you sent me that statement? I am a little confused as my emails and the one you responded to specifically asked about those briefing slides, and I did follow up to triple check. With, uh, with those specifically attached, and you said in reply to that message that your statement applied to the photos as well, but nothing else. Given the slides are all of photos, I took that as you were verifying the images, but not the data slash information in the caption itself, which I understood why. Can you please clarify the above? In addition, I have reason to believe the USS Omaha encountered this spherical shaped object on July 15th, 2019, between the times of 10.30 and 11.30 p.m. Pacific off the coast of San Diego, California. With those times of and specifics, I'm hoping you can confirm the incident with the UAS took place. Is there anything else you can add since it appears the event itself is unclassified? Thank you for your time. Now, Goff responded this morning, John, I specifically told you twice that I had nothing for you on anything other than the photos and the video. I'll send you what I sent Roger Glazel, so you have it. Video changed to singular. So now it's changing. Multiple examples where she was referencing videos prior, but now this morning it was changed. This is 
where it solidified for me that the confusion was palpable. What in the world was the Pentagon's stance? I was trying to get it and get clarification, uh, but I couldn't. So I responded to what I felt was a strongly worded and likely she was annoyed message. I'll let you decipher it. It's an email, so very hard to uh, get emotion on how it's attached. But it seemed to me like she was a little perturbed. So I wrote back. I'm in no way trying to annoy you with this, but I do hope you can see my confusion. The briefing slides are of photos. And despite you not confirming or commenting on the caption contents, I took what you said as confirming those photographs as well, since I sent them to you and referenced them with the rest. However, it appears you were not commenting on those photos, hence my attempt to clarify here. Despite me apparently overstaying my welcome on trying to clarify the issue, I assure you accuracy is my number one priority and reported what you told me as those briefing slide photos were, to my belief, authenticated by your statement. Yet it appears now that is not so. So I am trying to clarify what I read in a tweet that you sent to someone else. She responded, understood, John, and I really do appreciate you always trying to be accurate. I just sent you what I'd sent our glass. I'll hope that clarifies things for you. And she did. She forwarded an email, which kind of seemingly had all their approved statements, copy and pasted. Uh, that's what she sent me. Here are those statements, and, and I'm reading them for the audio version a little bit, but also I want to prove a point here even further, that even with this, as of today, Goff is still referencing the page that she's authenticating with her statement, and that page that she is referencing has the briefing slides on them. Let me read to you what she sent. Below is the statement that I have provided to others in response to questions about the Mystery Wire article, and then a link to those three photos, the sphere, metallic blimp, and the acorn, and an Extraordinary Beliefs article. That was Jeremy Corbell's with, you guessed it, those briefing slides slash photos slash videos, if you want to refer to them like that, and the real video itself that is of the flying pyramids as it was reported. So those were linked in Susan Goff's email. I can confirm that the referenced photos and videos, uh oh, videos plural again, were taken by Navy personnel. The UAPTF has included these incidents in their ongoing examinations. As we've said before, to maintain operations, security, and to avoid disclosing information that may be useful to potential adversaries, DOD does not discuss publicly the details of either the observations or the examinations of reported incursions into our training ranges or designated airspace, including those incursions initially designated as UAP. Also to clarify, I'm only confirming that the cockpit photos, photographs, and videos, videos plural, what the Mystery Wire article refers to as the sphere, acorn, and metallic blimp and the videos, plural, taken with a night vision device in the Extraordinary Beliefs article were taken by Navy personnel. I have nothing for you regarding any other images or depictions in those articles. Regarding the UAP report to Congress, I'd like to clarify for you that the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence report attached to the Fiscal 2021 Intelligence Authorization Act, which was part of the omnibus spending bill signed on December 27, 2020, tasked the Director of National Intelligence in consultation with the Secretary of Defense with submitting a UAP report to Congress. The department is aware of the requirement and is working with the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. I refer you to OD, uh, ODNI for anything further on the UAP report. See why it's all confusing? Video, videos, referencing the article with the briefing slides, yet nowhere in there does she say, by the way, the photos depicted in those briefing slides do not apply to my statement about photos or the videos I reference, even though there's only one on that page, does not include the video uh, exports of screenshots as depicted on those briefing slides. Ample opportunity to me directly and ample opportunity on these types of things sent out, obviously, to numerous people to clarify they do not. Now, why is that? 
And I don't have an answer to that. Why was it so easy for me to write the Pentagon? And in fact, I don't want to say it was easy, but it was rather quick. Why was it so quick after numerous attempts uh, within a couple of days to get a response from the Pentagon about these photos and video authenticating all of them, even going to the point of triple checking and getting responses on a Friday evening? Why am I able to do all of that and show you guys, in my opinion, ample evidence? If you don't agree with me or you agree with me, that's up to you. But no matter what happens, put your comments below. I'd love to hear them uh, on the YouTube channel. If you're on my site, just go ahead and go over to the YouTube channel and post your articles uh, or excuse me, comments uh, away from this article and on the video channel. That way I can see what you think, because I feel the evidence is overwhelming that I was referencing the briefing slides and whichever way you want to slice it or dice it or Julianne it, whether they're photos or video that you re refer to as the briefing slides, it doesn't matter. Her statements would apply. Let me know what you think. But I think that that evidence is overwhelming. Why is it that they are now being either backtracked or involved in this very convoluted confusing saga of trying to get this slide right here with the USS Omaha with what they call in the caption UAS encounter. So UAS is unmanned aerial system or a drone. So they don't even call it UAP. Why is that so difficult to authenticate? You'll see up here the real video that Jeremy Corbell published photographs or still frames of that video. And then of course, this, why is it that those other ones were all authenticated? These were all authenticated. This was authenticated. Yet this down here was not. And I believe that this is further evidence to support intentional misinformation. I hate to sound conspiratorial, but I'm sorry. Why? Why would all of this happen? I get it spokespeople don't want to clarify or specify if they don't have to. And yet with this, a sensitive topic like UAPs should have that clarification. Now, why do I say that? Well, just look at some of the headlines that people run when it comes to the mainstream media. Look at that. Look to see how wild and out of control those headlines become. One of two things is going on. The DOD wants those headlines. That's why they're so convoluted and they don't clarify because they want the mass confusion, the wild speculation and the outrageous claims by some media outlets. They also want the contradictory reporting because when you look at my string of emails and all of the ample opportunities they had to clarify that they were not talking about the photo photos or referenced video uh, in their statements. They didn't do it, yet Fox News went out of their way in their video story about all of this. They went out of their way to say that these slides were not included in the statement. Now, why is that? Did they push like I did? Well, I'm not sure. <clears throat> not yet, hint, hint. But I'm not sure what those communications were. All I do know is that on their network and their video presentation that I found online, they, they took off the the broadcast version and, and put it on their uh, website. They went out of their way to say that this was not, this was not included. Now, why is that? And we will find out by the way, I'm going after that on, on how that, that came about. Did Fox news ask, or did the Pentagon offer it up, but why? And that to me is more evidence of the intentional misinformation and confusion surrounding this. Why was it so easy to confirm this and not this? It's clear that if this is confirmed and you see the captions here and the style and the quality of the image and the uh, pretty much everything, it's, it's, a, it's a match. Meaning, look, if these are real, the likelihood of this one not being real is probably pretty nil. I don't like assuming in this world, but it kind of seems like, okay, we can kind of confirm that this is legit. Why won't the Pentagon do the same? Why won't they address it? And I don't have a, an answer to that. All I do know 
is this is more confusing than it should be. And that you can see in the interest of accuracy, I become an annoyance. But triple checking is the way to go. Why? Because when other media outlets start publishing contradictory evidence, I just had this gut feeling like I told you earlier to save all that communication because I was going to need it later. And sure enough, I did. So now you have the full story. You see the string, you see what happens, and you see how it all went down. What does it all mean? I wish I had that answer for you. Maybe we'll get more clarity tomorrow or next week or next year. Who knows in the crazy 2021 world we live in. But that is the Black Vault's side of all of this. Thanks for going inside the Black Vault with me today. I hope this video gave a little bit more clarity on what really is going on and the complexity of all of this. Because I assure you, it's not easy. And sometimes, although I have a lot of fun with it, it's annoying as all heck. <laughs> so even though I'm an annoyance to others, I assure you some of this becomes very frustrating and I want to pull my hair out. Tell me what you think. Again, if you're on the article page on theblackvault.com, click on this video, pop over to YouTube, like, subscribe, turn notifications on, and place your comments below. If I'm an absolute nutcase and I didn't get some kind of glaring clarity from the emails, let me know. If you agree, let me know as well. If you just don't care, hey, post that too. Just be nice to everyone else. Thanks so much for listening. This is John Greenwald Jr. signing off. We'll see you next time.